Namaste. This is Pavitra Chakravarti and I'm here with uh, Kalyan and uh, Srinath. The topic of discussion was Reza Aslan's episode uh, on Hinduism uh, called Believer, which aired last Sunday on CNN. So Kalyanji, the previous segment you had raised um, the, uh, the very, uh, I guess, the very valid observation that to be able to explore and to make nuanced and meaningful observations about about a religion like 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 Hinduism, which is which is so complex yeah. and which is which offers so many different paths, which a lot of people of the Abrahamic faiths may not relate to, and unless you have been introduced by by a guru and then done a lot of in depth study and managed to assimilate and ingest that information, you may not be in any position to look at it through the right lens. So having said that, and looking at Reza Aslan's episode, which supposedly he studied Hinduism for one week, who would you say is correctly placed to make such comments and observations on concepts like, you know, caste or jadivarna, karma, re reincarnation, yeah. etc. You see, uh, you know, for example, if, if a person wanted to authentically try to explore and understand and depict Hinduism, a scholar could have approached, say for example, Ramakrishna mission. They could have explored Chinmaya mission. They could have explored Jaggi Vasudev or uh, Art of Living, or Sri Sri Ravi Shankar and so on. There are so many uh, Baba Ramdev or uh, so many in India who are far more authoritative and legitimate uh, you know, uh, uh, articulators of Hinduism, you know, and the perspective you would get would be much different than if you select the Aghori sect to explore Hinduism. So, the, 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 the first thing is the, the motivation right. is, is very self evident right there. Now, let us contrast that with a book called uh, American Veda written by a gentleman by the name Philip Goldberg, which explores Hinduism through the lens of how Hinduism has influenced the United States of America through the emergence of uh, the arrival of Swami Vivekananda, the, even the founding fathers, some of the great academics, you know, intellectuals of the early, like, uh, early era like the Henry David Thoreau and uh, Emerson, Ralph Waldo Emerson, who were very inspired by the writings, the texts of the Upanishads and the Bhagavad Gita and so on. And you can go on and on from there, you know, the arrival of Swami Vivekananda, the Swami Paramahamsa Yogananda, the yoga movement, which has become so ubiquitous today in, uh, in the West. Yeah, but it's not associated with Hinduism, it's universal consciousness. Right, I mean, it is not, but it is, you know, if, if you just go just a little one inch deeper, it is you, you enter into Patanjali's Yoga Sutras and exactly. you enter into Bhagavad Gita's enormous uh, discourse on yoga being so varied and uh, diverse, you know, Bhakti Yoga, Jnana Yoga, Karma Yoga, Raja Yoga, Tantra Yoga and so on. So, the thing is, if, if your intent is right, you have the, the appropriate intent to, to learn genuinely one would not try to conflate, a, you pick something you know which is so sensational and bizarre and try to conflate it in a very cleverly with the mass, the, the large body of the practice of Hinduism, which is exactly what he has done. It is roughly equivalent to you know uh, doing a show on Islam showing a series of scenes about ISIS and Al-Qaeda, okay, showing the beheadings or showing the, the most uh, heinous activities perpetrated by these terrorist groups and then representing them as the whole of Islam. Okay. And you did it very subtly, you said we are we're, we're talking only about Al-Qaeda now, we are not talking about the whole of Islam. but then. Islam also believes the same things that these people believe and they, these people quote the verses from the Quran and the Hadith yeah. and if you do that cleverly, it would conflate the two, 
which is precisely what he has done. And uh, I mean, you know, it has uh, terrible consequences for our uh, community, for sure. Absolutely. Srinath, <clears throat> what is your opinion on the fact that a, a, a news reporting uh, station like the CNN, which has tremendous outreach, both within the United States and internationally, how do you think they could agree to to broadcasting something like this, which is so misrepresentative? Should they not have had the foresight to find out if he discussed this with, with Hindu gurus or if it had been corroborated by anyone in, in any kind of authority over these very esoteric concepts? Okay, so I'll answer very quickly in two ways. One is that, uh, you know, in, in today's world, it's like Kalyan said, it's very competitive, it's getting dog eat dog. And it's not the agenda or the charter of these news organizations to want to be fair and uh, equitable. That's not what they're here for. I mean, the, there's a commercial interest, all right, and uh, they, they will go with uh, depicting things that are presented to them correctly that make a case for business interests that get the maximum number of hits online, those kind of considerations. So that's one thing. And the second thing is traditionally both the the Western left and right have not been pro-Hindu at all, yes. and uh, the, 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 there's an asymmetry here. Yes. Uh, and the the they're not. It doesn't look to me, at least, that uh, right now they are going to change that direction, uh, simply because uh, the paymasters are someone else. Okay? Exactly. And I don't have all the evidence, but I have enough suspicion to say that yes. there's a lot of funding coming from vested interests and a lot of uh, anti-Hindu players that have deep pockets. And I believe this is one of the source of the problems. In addition to the fact that, you know, no one's going to represent you in the West on your behalf. You're going to, have to represent yourself, and that's something Hindus have to learn. They're going to learn this ground game, and they have enough wealth and they have enough uh, power, but they, they they can't, you know, if you can't play the game, you can't win. So very well said, we Srinath. Um, so Kalyanji, I would like to next approach um, the the issue of. Uh, the misrepresentation of Hinduism. So we have already seen it in the past by people like Wendy Doniger, Witzel, Sheldon Pollock, etc. to name just a few. Do you think that this playing field is now widening to encompass the new age, the apologist Islamists, the ones who are cloaking Islam under this moderate Sufi-like uh, you know, shield almost, so to speak? And do you think we are going to see more of this, these kind of shows being aired where we are essentially helpless? And after that, we make a little bit of noise, but significant damage has already been done. Yeah. How do you think, do, A, the first question is, do you think we're going to see more of this? And B, how do you think we can combat it? Okay, these are uh, very complex Complicated questions. Complicated okay. questions. I'm sorry, you have to yeah. solve the problems of uh, Hinduism <laughs> in like one hour. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so, uh, so first of all, um, you know, let's talk a little bit about the academia. Okay, the, the academic world consisting of uh, people like Michael Witzel, Sheldon Pollock, Wendy Doniger and many others, Jeffrey Kripal, Paul Cotright, you know, Martha Nussbaum, I mean, you could Robert Goldman, there are so many in this mm -hmm. domain. First of all, they are all outsiders to Hinduism. As much as they wish to represent right. their understanding of Hinduism as objective okay they bring to their objective study of hinduism their own baggage and their own predispositions okay. which they do not wish to examine and they do not wish for anybody else to examine that either because you know because they means their their narrative is they are objective okay and because they occupy these seats of uh, so-called uh, uh, intellectual credibility, you know, in, in the form of uh, tenured professorships and chairs in prestigious universities like Columbia, like University of Chicago, like UC Berkeley and Harvard and so on, their narrative about Hinduism becomes authoritative. And this is the problem in the California textbook battle also. For those of you who don't know, we are going through another round of this battle right now. And uh, Kapim, an organization called uh, uh, California Parents for Equality in Educational Materials, Kapim has just filed a lawsuit 
against the California State Board of Education complaining that the representation of Hinduism and the guidelines that they have created for how Hinduism should be taught in uh, schools is completely unfair with reference to how it deals with Judaism, Christianity and Islam and Buddhism and so on and Hinduism on the other hand. Okay. And the guidelines themselves says when talking about Hinduism, the main things you had to focus on is the Aryan invasion of India, <laughs> the emergence of Brahminism, the emergence of the caste system, the emergence of uh, untouchability and the Dalit problem as the some of the main pillars of the narrative about Hinduism. Right. And then maybe incidentally you can throw in a little bit about some temples and some other practices. And Just as architectural, you know, yeah, whatever, uh, you know examples so of good architecture. Yeah. So, but the main points are already set in stone and every publisher who publishes to these uh, standards, uh, to these, this, into this framework has to deal with these subjects. And if you, uh, you know, if you look at uh, how they write, publishers write, they go to the academia to find sources okay. and whatever they write gets validated by long chains of citations from these professors and their students. I mean, you know, there is, there is 200 years of, of written material, academically rigorous uh, credentialed materials that they can draw in support of this particular narratives. On the other hand, to, to, to present another narrative, an alternate, an, a, a narrative that is grounded inside the traditions of Hinduism, inside the sampradayas, the, the spiritual perspectives, the, the authority figures are outside. They are the gurus and acharyas sitting in Shingeri and uh, you know, Mutt's Art of Living and Ramakrishna Mission and, and all these places. Okay. But they are not players in the publishing domain as when it comes to school textbooks, university textbooks and so on. So, this is a very asymmetric problem. See, the asymmetry comes from the fact that one group is considered credentialed and therefore authoritative and the other group is considered uncredentialed and therefore biased. Okay. So, we when, when the Hindu community objects mm. and protests, whether we protest on Facebook or Twitter or wherever else, we will be depicted as a sort of a fringe fanatic Hindu, you know, just Hindu the lay type of community uh, who is just, uh, you know, unfortunately riled up in a misguided sort of a way. And this is the fundamental asymmetry that is, a, is an enormous challenge for our community. Uh, so, for example, you know, if you to deal with the California textbook problem, right? The right way to do it would be to field a set of professors, academics, who would write the narrative on behalf of the publishers and participate with the publishers. But since we are not able to muster yes. enough academics, credentialed academics, we are at a, a kind of a disadvantageous position. And this is where you know, we, whatever we say, Riza Aslan is a credentialed academic. She yeah. has got the PhD to the show degrees. for it. He has the degrees, he has the background. So, if he says, I am a, his, I'm a religious, religious historian, if I, I'm a religious historian, if he says that, it is not uh, inconceivable that CNN would believe him and trust him. See, the asymmetry, uh, you can say another aspect about the asymmetry is that uh, we are all talking here. At the most, we can be on YouTube. <laughs> you know, why can't we be on CNN? Right? Or not we, as in us. No, not, I understand. Not somebody, not, not some a group of professors, you know, who okay. could be called to have this discussion on CNN. Why not? We have not arrived there, okay, as a community. Mm -hmm we have not yet matured to the point where we can field our own academics and scholars who are responsible spokespersons for our community in the public square and that's one of the you know the next uh, phases of development
for our community at large. Well, with that, we will take a short break. Thank you, Kalyanji and Srinath. Uh, we are discussing Reza Aslan's uh, Believer that aired on CNN. We'll be right back. <laughs> 